Good evening, everyone. Thanks, thanks for tuning in. Matt Kelly here, uh, as the sign says behind. Uh, I'm a mortgage broker, uh, mortgage agent, actually, more, more accurately. Um, and I'm thrilled to have a guest on with me this week. I'm going to bring him on stage in just a minute. His name is Mike Pistorius. He's, uh, he's a newer realtor out of Windsor. Uh, and we're just going to kind of learn here where, you know, my channels have always been aimed at helping people learn, whether that be about mortgages, whether it be about real estate. Tonight, we're going to kind of go through what uh, kind of the home buying process looks like. And Mike's going to lend his expertise on, uh, you know, specifically ar around the Windsor market. So bear with me a sec. I'm just going to just going to bring him up here um, and let him kind of introduce himself a little bit. And then we'll jump through a little presentation that him and I have have kind of created for you. So, so further ado, Mike, thanks for coming on, man. How's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. For those of yeah. you who don't know, I'm a realtor down in Windsor and couldn't wait to jump onto this. Yeah, sounds good. Now, so Windsor, relatively big area. Did I did I see correctly? Deerbrook handles like Windsor and Essex, or Windsor Essex County is all under the same board and same region. So it's actually Windsor Essex County, and we're all covered under the same umbrella. Okay, so I'm going to quickly pull something up here um, and add a a little bit of a screen share with. Uh, yeah, you yeah. can. That's all Windsor Essex County. So if you see the little white. And then the rest of the green is the county portion. So that's the entire okay, region. Well, let's, uh, let's not get too crazy. So do you, you cover <laughs> everywhere from like Bell River down to like, are you down to Amherstburg as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So everything you're seeing there is is Windsor Essex County. And there's actually a part cut off. We almost go all the way to Stony Point. Pretty well once you hit oh. Chatham Kent, once you hit kind of Tilbury a little past there. So most of this region is actually Windsor Essex that you're seeing on the screen. Well, that's uh, that, that's a large area. Is there is there any specific uh, you know areas that that you're an expert on, or, or how did you? I mean, how did you land on the West Windsor Essex area, Mike? Born and raised. Uh, I was born and raised in Windsor. Oh, get back on screen. Yeah. Born, born and born raised around. in Windsor Essex, and uh, I lived in the actual city of Windsor itself, in pretty pretty cold area called South Walkerville. And, okay. Yeah. I uh, moved out to Bell River for a little bit and then came back to the neighborhood. So I'm just from this entire area. And when you sign up for Windsor Essex, it's wouldn't make sense to go anywhere else. Yeah, you got you got it all all connected, Mike. Yeah. We talked a little bit of, before this. I mean, I have obviously some family that uh, has nestled down in the Windsor Windsor area, but also my sister in law, her family's from Tecumseh oh, cool. uh, as well. So. We, uh, you know, we go down there a, a fair bit, and then in a in a past life, past job, I found myself <laughs> working uh, working quite a bit in uh, in Windsor. So it's a great um, city. A it great is. City. It is. There's a lot yeah, of comparables always, between London and us too, but it's a great city. Yeah, nice nice mixes culture wise for sure. Um, Windsor definitely a lot more of a manufacturing hub, but uh, I'm actually from just outside of just outside of London in St Thomas, gotcha. um, which I mean, a fair amount of parallels to Windsor yeah. minus the great places to eat. So um, that, that Windsor's has here. So I'm going to pull this up. Uh, the whole goal of this, as we talked a little bit before, is we're just going to go through how to buy a home. Um, and with that, uh, you know, there's kind of seven or eight steps, I think. Um, but and we'll kind of just go a little bit back and forth as to, uh, you know, kind of who who wants to talk on what. So. Start off. I'll let I'll let you introduce yourself to anybody who's who's hopping in and checking out. Um, and what I will say before you go ahead, Mike, is just if anybody has any questions, you can ask. This is a pretty interactive thing. We'll be able to see your questions, and you'll be able to get some answers in real time. So, but without further ado, yes, please Mike, jump in with it. Yeah, go. Yeah, so I'm Mike Pastorius. Like I mentioned, I'm with Deerbrook Realty. I mean, you got it all here on there. I am a sports lover, but no. Born and raised in Windsor, Essex County. I love what I do in real estate, and that's pretty well. That's pretty well the gist of it. There's not too much more to go in depth there. I I love my sports, love my coffee, like everybody else, and yeah. it's I love it here. It's it's so much fun getting into this. Um, so, <laughs> go ahead. so I know a little bit of your background with the people that are just tuning in that maybe are from my audience, not not yeah. as familiar with you. What did you do before? Or, you know, what led you to real estate, Mike? So actually, I first started out as a bartender in a local Windsor restaurant, and then 
graduated from sports and recreation management at St. Clair College, the first graduating class, which I like to explain as business dumbed down for the athletes that never made it. Uh, from there, I worked at a local financial institution for about four years. I did everything from call center to in branch work. And it just, I loved the people I worked with. I loved my membership at the location I was at, but it just wasn't for me. And I needed more. I needed to be able to help people in a different way with stuff I truly believed in yeah. and the natural transition, because I, I was going through the first time home buying process myself. It just seemed mm. like such a natural transition where. I just kind of happened to find the real estate course and fell in love with it, took the course and here I am. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, you have a great background coming from a little bit of that, uh, you know, of the finance background mm -hmm. in, in your last job. And then, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, you know, you talked about how you did a lot of customer service there. Um, there's a lot of people that you and I kind of both are, you know, mutually in some circles. And one of the common points is that like, ultimately we're both in the customer service industry absolutely you know you just happen to sell houses and i happen to you know happen to fund them so and i think with perfect. both our career paths too our our networking and our relationships i feel like like real estate mortgages is just kind of a byproduct of of the connections and the friendships that we make and create honestly it's yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's a, it's all about the relationships. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you you can probably attest to this going through the process yourself. But when people are going through the process of buying a home or buying, you know, whether it's their first home, their tenth home, I mean, it's not typically something we do all the time. There's a lot of questions, and one of the things that I sought out, probably much like yourself, was okay. I want to provide some value, provide some some understanding to people, kind of as to what is behind the process there. So right. um, Mike was ripping on me before we started. He was glad that uh, <laughs> I wasn't wearing my Jays jersey and I knew it would probably provide some fuel for the fire. Um, obviously being from the area, Mike's uh, a huge Red Wings fan. Um, while I'm not a Leafs fan, I will get that out of the way, but- uh, We're actually pretty split down here. It's pretty close to 50-50 for Leafs wings. It's it's quite interesting being in a border town like this. Yeah, St. Thomas, the London area is actually pretty pretty much the same. You sprinkle yeah. in the occasional uh, Canadians fan, um, uh, which yes. is where my where my sister-in-law's allegiance lies. But, uh, but anyway, so- Moving, uh, moving on, this is my least favorite slide talking about myself. I mean, I am a mortgage <laughs> agent with, uh, with Mortgage Architects. My background is, at, is as an accountant. Um, started off in public accounting, moved into industry, um, you know, kind of got really interested in real estate when I started to invest in it myself, buying, you know, had, bought my first property, ended up selling it, ended up moving into a duplex, house hacking for a while, um with my then girlfriend who is now married luckily pictured with my with my pup there tessa three-year-old red lab who uh you know that's a cool dog uh, yeah yeah she's she, she's a beauty uh loves when we come down to the come see my uh i guess my brother's in-laws have this really nice in ground pool like most labs she is uh she's a pain in the ass truthfully to get out of the water <laughs> but uh she ends up super tired out of it so uh you know worth it she's in there um, that's funny. yeah so moving on so let's uh, tell me tell me about your your area i mean obviously really cut off a lot of the essex county part that's of the right. snapshot that's right. but but tell me about windsor i mean expand on any of those points tell me something that's not on there just tell me about your area mike I'm just double checking this. It it definitely is a large manufacturing town in the very first culture. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind, at least when I went there, our athletics is actually it's it's starting to compete with some of the bigger cities across Ontario as well. But okay. on top of that, I know there's a documentary that came up recently about our pizza. Apparently, we have great pizza around here in bars and restaurants. It's it's a city in a county, I should say. It's not even just city of Windsor because a lot of the other outskirt counties too, they're really thriving. There's a lot of local breweries and wineries. And uh, I like to think our wineries are on par, if not better than Niagara region, to be honest with you. It's just yeah. everything like that social wise is taking off here and the manufacturing for, especially the automotive, that's really, really stable. And um, they're, they're doing a lot of good initiatives to keep that in our area. It's, it's really fun to be a part of. 
Yeah, yeah, no, fair, fair enough. That's what took me down there in my past life was was going down and visiting some of those automotive clients um, down there. I mean, you've got Caesars. I mean, as people can see, tuning in, winds are right across from Detroit. Uh, you got the Ambassador Bridge take you across. Yeah. So, um, Actually, that's, I'm glad you brought up Caesars. There's a fun fact that not many people know that if you go on their website, you can see. Out of all the Caesars chains, chains, including in Las Vegas, it's actually the biggest concert venue for all the Caesar chains. Interesting. Hold, hold a little over 5,000 people, and you would think Vegas would be bigger, but according to their website, it's not. Interesting. Yeah, yeah no. That's, that's, we get a lot that's, of that's, that's the benefit of having locals on, as they can tell you those little <laughs> bits for sure. Answer. Great, great education. I know you went down to St. Clair. Yeah. Uh, my brother did his his undergrad at Windsor. So did my mom. A lot of my family has actually yeah, ended up going to person. going down to Windsor. Um, I struck a little bit of a, a different path myself, but uh, yeah, great, great schools, great areas. Um, and so, let's talk about the home buying buying process now. Let's dive in. You got your power team, you got Mike, you know, leading out nice and vivid, me with a picture that I absolutely hate, but my wife insists is up in our kitchen. Um, there's really, when it comes to buying a home, whether it's your first home or whether it's your 10th home or, or rental property versus one you're going to own or occupy, there's certain people that you should absolutely have kind of in your corner as your power team, right? So in no particular order, you absolutely are going to need a realtor. You're going to need a mortgage professional, whether that's somebody in the bank or somebody that works kind of in the broker channel like myself, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, what I like to tell people is when you're looking at mortgage professionals, there's a lot of them out there. We all essentially do the same thing. We all have access to pretty much the same lenders. So just pick with somebody you, you kind of know, like, and trust, and you know, you feel comfortable talking with. Uh, there's no stupid questions. If you know, a realtor helps you buy the most expensive purchase of your life. And on the flip side, a mortgage professional is going to help give you the biggest debt. Um, of, of your <laughs> life. So you better, better feel pretty damn comfortable working with them. And then you've got a lawyer is what's most commonly used. There's a couple of nice to have professionals, right? Your appraisers, your home inspectors, um, it, you know, as well, but those three members are absolutely kind of who you're gonna you're gonna want so let's get into the steps i mean they're up there on the screen most of i mean the first two steps in my opinion and in my experience happen interchangeably truth be told in a perfect world you probably want to get pre-approved first but more often than not what i've seen and mike i'll invite you in here to, to let me know if you've seen any different a lot of people connect with the realtor first and then go look for financing. Is that what you've seen too, Mike? Or? I do, and I want you to say something you said two points ago and for the people in the back. Get pre-approved before you call your realtor because the first question I'm going to ask you if you call me is one of two things. It's going to be, are you working with another realtor? No, great, love to help you. Secondly, do you have your financing in place to buy a house? It yeah. goes that quick in the conversation. Yeah. So those yeah. of you, I hope you're paying attention. Get your pre-approval and your financing in place it makes the process so much easier because we can chop off down this list. Whereas if you don't have your financing in place, that's the first thing I'm having you do before we start figuring out your needs and wants and everything else, because I can't do any of it if you can't afford the home or if you can't buy a home or if your price point is unrealistic versus what you think you can afford. Yeah, it's the classic uh, champagne taste on a beer budget. So let's, <laughs> let's talk about getting pre-approved um, you know, there's a lot of terms probably like in the real estate industry that are used interchangeably. And even if you, you kind of bake that down to mortgage financing, a lot of people use the term pre-approval, pre-qualification. I think they mean the same thing. They actually, they actually don't. And so a pre-approval, it's not quite the complicated math formula you see on the screen. Really getting financing for a home comes down to really four things. It comes down to the down payment you have, the household income, your credit, meaning not just what you're paying each month in terms of you know servicing your debt, but also like your credit history as well. And then the house. Mike is 100% the expert in the house. Um, the other three things, I'm not gonna go as far as saying I'm the expert, <laughs> but I definitely feel that I know a little bit more than most um, with, with my background. And so, the way I work my process 
is to get all those documents up front in order to give you a pre-approval, um, you know, or as close to a pre-approval as possible. It's a little bit more difficult without a, you know, kind of subject property or a property that you really have in mind. But the way you can model it is, okay, well, if, you know, if you're starting to talk to Mike or you've been looking on the MLS, um, you can kind of get an idea of the properties you are falling in love with or the properties that you at least want to go see. We can plug that into your application and see whether they're in the realm of possibility. You know, Mike, you said something, you said something really good, you know, that you're, you know, in your screening or in your qualification process, you're asking, you know, really early on, it's your second question, whether they're pre-approved. You know, a lot of people look at that and they think, well, why is he necessarily asking me that? Well, what I've seen early in, you know, kind of within COVID, it's been a requirement to even go see a house to, you know, at least in my area, because they don't want to introduce unnecessary risk. But the other reason why it's good to be pre-approved before connecting with a realtor is that, like, you just want to be respectful of their time, right? Like, if you're going to go out and see a house that's, you know, $700,000, Mike goes and takes you there and then you go through the pre-approval process or you start that and you find that you can only buy a house that's 400,000. Like it's, it's setting you up for a little bit of failure. It's, it's, a, it's being a little disrespectful of Mike's time, in my opinion. So just kind of get your eggs in one basket and, and start shopping with confidence is kind of how I always phrase it to, to my clients. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But. And let me, uh, let me add one more point to that. Of course, man. There's a lot of things that a lot of people don't know. And the, the point I want to add is we actually as realtors have an ethical duty to bring people through houses that are willing, ready, and able. Yeah. Just because you're willing to buy a house doesn't mean you're ready to. The financing kind of lets you know that you are ready and able to. It ties those two in together. And, we, and if you don't have those in place, we aren't supposed to be bringing you through those houses because we can't confidently believe that you're re willing, ready, and able to purchase this home that we're going to bring you through. Yeah, hundred percent. No, that's that's a that's a great point, Mike. So, assuming we've got a buyer that is pre-approved, you know, this is when you know they're going to connect with uh, you know your handsome face. Before I let you jump into these points, what are the chances that jacket's from Freeze? Uh, that's a great question. Actually, I got it as a gift. I have no yeah, idea where okay. it was from. My girlfriend, so when I graduated the program, she bought it for me as a gift. So I was like, you know what? If I'm using my business card photos, I'll use the jacket she bought me with the suit. Yeah, so no, I have no sense. idea. It could be from Freed's. It is yeah. one of the area favorites. Um, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't actually tell you, though. Yeah, no, fair enough. One of my buddies <laughs> from university, his family owns Freed's, and that's where... Uh, where oh, I, I hope I got it from there, then. I like to support yeah. people around me. So I hope <laughs> no. I got it from there. It's all good, man. So... When they're connecting with a realtor, I'll let you jump in. I mean, you can add to these things. You can take away, you know, when you're connecting with a realtor, what should, as a as somebody looking to buy a home, what should you be thinking about? Well, I think you said uh, when you're talking about your mortgage broker as well, or your financial lender, if they go through a bank, someone you know, like, and trust. That's one of the biggest things first is you got to be able to trust the person you're working with. Because like you said, they have the biggest transaction of your life or one of the biggest transactions of your life in order. Oh, my screen's flopping around on me here. <laughs> one of the biggest that was, that uh, transactions of your life in their hands. And they are giving you advice that is going to alter the future of your life, right? Whether it's, are you going to buy this home? Are you going to move in? Are you going to keep looking? So you definitely need to know someone that is like-minded that you know, that you trust. And if you don't know them, this is the one exception to not getting your pre-approval first. Ask them out for kind of a presentation. We have buyer presentations. We can go to coffee. We can just discuss, get to know each other before you decide you actually want to move forward with the health spying process. Now, in that, we still ask if uh, you're going to be working with other realtors or if you are working with other realtors because we don't like stepping on each other's toes either. And it's, it's not really the right thing to do. But if you're not under contract with anyone else, get to know the person you're working with. Right. And then in that conversation, you all... It, it's really easy as a professional, and I shouldn't say easy, but we, our brain works in a weird way where we've talked to so many people that we pick up on little cues in a general conversation to get together. You mentioned your spouse, your kids, your dog. Well, I hear those things. You got to be near a good school. You got to be in a family friendly area. Maybe not something where there's 
a lot of trouble. Um, in, in those conversations, we learn a lot about you and we get to know you, but you get to know about us and what we're all about because like you said, all us realtors, we do the same thing, we have the same access, but the quality you're getting in the commission that you pay, it, the value is in the relationship and the knowledge they have and the trust that you have in them. So I think that's one of the biggest things you can have. And once you are ready to hire me on, we get in a little deeper of the conversation. Okay, you got your financing. Great. How big of a house are you looking for? What is your budget? Do you plan on growing your family? Are you downsizing? Mm. And the conversation is almost hard to go off the hypothetical because each unique circumstance is, right. or sorry, each circumstance is uniquely different. Mm -hmm. But the conversation, it, it just goes for, it can be 10 minutes. It can be a couple of hours, depending on how well you work with your agent. We normally have our process on what we like to do. And it's at the end of the day, you're buying certain types of structured homes. You either want a condo or you don't. And it just, the list goes on and on. But the most important thing, work with someone you know, like, and trust. And if you don't know them, interview them so you can like and trust them. And if it's, trust me, if you're not, <laughs> if you don't think we're getting along very well, I'm probably thinking the same thing. Yeah, it goes both yeah. ways, right? We're, we're all human. We all know how to read each other and everyone gets the same feeling on this is going great or this isn't. Yeah, no, that's one of the things. So to jump backwards a little bit in the mortgage yeah, so pre-approval process, um, we have something similar. It's not typically as binding as, you know, the relationship that you have with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the contract that they sign, you know, with, with realtors. Yeah, but um, really what I always describe it as, you know, for clients, I say two things. I mean, for on the mortgage side, it's, it's I describe it as a glorified permission slip. And the biggest thing it, it gives me permission to do is to pull your credit. But the thing that I often lead up to that is saying like, look, this relationship has to be right for both of us. Um, I don't like mine at least are not super restrictive because I'm not going to force you to stick in a bad relationship. that's not working out for, for either of us. Right. And so, mm -hmm. you know, hearing you say, you know, if you're thinking it's not working out well, then chances are, you know, that you yourself are, are having similar thoughts kind of, you know, really brought that up for me. So right. um, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot. I know you've started on YouTube doing some neighborhood features. Loosely, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, I mean, I'm going to ask you a few questions um, and you don't, I won't make you pick just one neighborhood. You can, you know, go around. But if I was meeting with you and I said, okay, hey, Mike, you know, let's say I've got two kids, they're elementary school age, and I'm looking for the best schools in Windsor, Essex. Where, <laughs> where, where are you putting me? Um, or where are you recommending as a few areas to maybe focus down the search a little bit? So elementary school. So I'm a little biased because I was born and raised in the South Walkerville area, but they actually have two fantastic grade schools in the area. And you're actually close to the hospital as well. Another really okay. family friendly neighborhood that has a lot of great schools in it and a lot of kids and families running around in the streets. So everyone drives nice and slow because that's big when you have kids. It's actually South Windsor as well. Uh, there's a mm. portion that's near St. Clair College, but there's also a portion that has a couple of grade schools and a high school that they feed into. And okay. if I had to pick a third one, I think Riverside towards the Tecumseh area has a lot going on for family friendly as well. There's, oh, there's so many, there's so many good pockets in this area that's hard to narrow it down, but if you're putting them yeah. spot for three, that's probably the directions I'm going. No, that that's fair. I mean, Windsor Essex, large CMA in itself, right? So mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to get, you know, good, good pockets throughout. So, if I was somebody, so this is a two, let's say this is, a, I'll break this up and give you the benefit of allowing it to be a, <laughs> a two-parter. Um, you know, different areas have different benefits or they, they tend to attract for people. But if I was somebody that, you know, let's say myself or my wife commuted a lot, what communities are, you know, going to give me that sense of community, but also easy access. I mean, Windsor has a pretty great infrastructure system mm -hmm. in my opinion but they do. yeah what are the best areas that are going to give me some some bang for buck while also making it easier easy for my commute whether that's so since i since i know you're coming in from out of town my first question is is 
what do you consider a long commute? Because Toronto's long commute versus London, St. Thomas' long commute, and Windsor's long commute are different. What, give me a time, like 10, 15 minutes, 20, 25. What do you consider a long commute to get to um, Yeah, so being from a small town, I don't really have any issues, and I also love to drive. So um, let's say, so I'm going to give you two ranges, and then I guess you can kind of pick. Um, so let's say 20 minutes, and then I'll give you like up to, I don't know, up to an hour. Well, the hour you get the whole county because you can get anywhere in 45 okay. minutes. Let, so that makes go, it easy. Yeah. But for 20 minutes, I would say anywhere inside of Windsor, Essex, you can't really go wrong. If you go to come see you right on the, we have an expressway, actually. I don't know if you guys know this or not. It goes directly through the center of our city pretty well. No stoplights, no nothing. It's complete on ramp, off ramp, similar to the 401 system, but it's inner city and it goes from end to end. So you can get all the way from actually Bell River and on because it turns into number two. But in our area, it's called EC Row, and I think it's Highway 22, if I remember correct. Okay. So yeah, as, long as, you're, as long as you're within EC a couple row. minutes, yeah, as yeah. long as you're within a couple minutes of EC Row, you can get across town in 20 minutes easily. No okay. problem. There's some accidents or anything you can't like that. So sure. South Windsor and and South Walkerville are pretty common. Riverside, it's not terrible, but the way, if you can see, it's towards the top of your map there, actually. You'll see Riverside, yeah. there's big greenery, you got McHugh. That's a little bit longer to get to the expressway, but gotcha. anywhere in the city, it doesn't take too long to get to. Another, oh, another fun community, I love LaSalle. Uh, LaSalle yeah. ha also has um, Ojibwe, which is federally protected. It's a, our wildlife mm -hmm. reserve. They have so many trails and a lot going on, but it's also family friendly community as well. Gotcha. You really gotcha. can't, it's, it's tough because you can't go wrong when, you're, when you don't want to drive longer than 20, 25 minutes. So for family friendly, I would probably go around those four regions. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, in the time that I've spent in Windsor, the one thing I've always appreciated, despite the area of Windsor, Essex, the infrastructure, like I said, it's really well mm -hmm. set up. It's one of the really common complaints about like about the London area yeah. is that the infrastructure sucks to get across the city where, you know, I've I've had some family that they, you know, they they work in Kitchener, they live in North London, they can get from Kitchener, get off the 401 in like let's say 40 minutes, but to get from one end of the city to the other end yeah. it can easily take them an hour, depending you know, not even on time of day or, or accident. So, okay, fair enough. And then if I was somebody, if I was somebody looking for entertainment, like where, I mean, aside from probably the obvious of near the university, but like where are some good spots? You know, I don't necessarily mean nightlife in terms of raging clubs or anything like that, <laughs> but you know, where is a good mix of like, you've got a lot of entertainment space, a lot of, you know, whether it's dining options around mm -hmm. or cultured events. Yeah. What, what are some the good easy spots? answer is Caesars Windsor. Uh, yeah. They have, they have the gambling there. They have concerts and comedy shows in the Coliseum, but they also have a few restaurants inside as well. Spago's being one of them. And Spago's so good. Yeah. They're a family favorite, but there's also Spago's on Erie street. And if you go into Walkerville, there's a healthy mix of, bars and then nice dining easy dining that's a very very community that it's in the Hiram Walker di district as well so those are for your audience that's in the London area that may not know Hiram Walkers is the distiller for like Weiser's liquor yeah Weiser's um, and that whole chain and family so they're actually there are old a lot of old townhouses in that area and historic houses where Hiram Walker's workers he used to live he pretty well built that nice. entire community and wow. all those houses were built by him and his workers in order for his workers to have somewhere to live closer to the distillery that's still there at walker road and riverside drive right on the water so walkerville has a lot going on in their nightlife and then if you go down a let to the water as well in riverside drive yeah. a lot of bars a lot of clubs and a lot of nice dining as well so walkerville the casino in downtown windsor Mm -hmm. all within 10 minute drives most of which are within a walk if you need to kind of stumble around from bar to bar or restaurant to restaurant they're all yeah, pretty yeah. close to each other and then a lot of the counties now that the population is increasing they're getting a lot of good restaurants as well but no uh walk walkerville the strip in walkerville or downtown windsor there's a lot of good places to eat 
Yeah, well, uh, one of the places we used to stay a lot when the trips down to Windsor was was in their walk in the Walkerville area. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, a lot yeah. of good. Uh, if if you like your beer, there's a lot of good breweries as well up there. They've got a few yeah. good ones. They have Walkerville Brewery is probably our most popular one, and it's yeah. They, there's a lot of good things going on in that area. There's actually a local uh, developer. They're going to make a distillery district, and they're adding a uh, mixed nice. unit condos and uh, businesses and industrial, so it can be a mix of like the main ground businesses and then condos above it to kind of revitalize the area there's a there's a lot of good things happening there i'm really yeah to see what so, happens sounds like a really good really good opportunity mm -hmm. for transportation mm -hmm. some good equity build for people that are looking there but going back i guess to the home buying process so we've yeah, yeah. you know we've had our interview with you we, we've nailed down what's important size of house etc 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 um one of the things that i always say is you know most despite how hot the market's been most people are still going to see homes although in our market and i don't know if it's like this in windsor um there are houses that get bought sight unseen it's, it's crazy um especially because i mean there's a number of tricks you learn about you know how certain photos have been taken but mm -hmm. you know you're looking at homes you know so what is the right you know I guess when we look at writing offers, what have you seen in your experience or what are some of the people in your office seeing? I mean, if you have somebody, let's say I come to you, you know, we nail down our, our needs and wants. Typically, how many homes are, are we going through or how many places am I offering on, you know, give or take before we, you know, we finally hit gold? Is it, is it that competitive that like down in Windsor right now or what's it? So it is. Um... The first thing I say is so once we have the conversation and you tell me you have your financing, the next thing that I you reiter, you, wow, words are hard today, guys. Uh, <laughs> reiterate. Right, yeah. yeah, until we re, that I reiterate until you're pro I'm probably gonna drive you nuts, is you have to be patient. Yeah. You have to be patient. We're gonna I'll tell you look last this about this time last year, maybe maybe spring last year, maybe my girlfriend, we went to go house hunting to buy a house. We went almost through 70 houses, had six offers to climb before we actually gave up. And I'm going against all my realtor friends and we rented. So this year too, like I can tell you in January, 630,000 630, was the average purchase price and the median mm -hmm. was 599. A lot of people, London, mm -hmm. Toronto doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot, but we're also competing with investors from London and Toronto coming down. I, I know you are. So you're going to be going through, it, it can take a few months sometimes. I mean, it depends mm. on your price point as well. Sure. When you're at that average mark or a little below, there's a lot more competition because there's less inventory, so supp simple supply and demand. Yeah. As you get into the higher price points, you get two options, compete with your price point or invest in the lower bracket because you know you have the cash and the capital to outbid them and to make stronger yeah. offers. So the thing that I reiterate and every time like, okay, guys, let's be patient. Let's go through these houses. It's never a bad thing. I'll go through as many houses as it takes with you, however long it will take, but I need you to be patient with me because this is a process. I've been there. It's hard. Every house we go through, it's, I need you to picture yourself here without falling in love with it. And that's very challenging to do. <laughs> it's it a very is. fine line. You're balancing on a razor blade there. Uh, yeah. What we're looking for in those houses we have a lot of older homes here so my main goal to protect you is to make sure it has the bones the foundations the windows the roof furnace ac you can throw in there the other thing that we have to go is you find your house that you love there is a difference between a firm offer and conditions offer for those of you that don't know firm no conditions you're going in cash you don't have to wait for anything that Deals done, you're just waiting until closing date. Conditions is your typical, your financing, your insurance, maybe getting a property inspection, and a couple more visits through. Um, sorry, I like to ramble on on tangents there. So, no, it, it, in long story short, it's a waiting game, it's a patience game, and right. it's a little bit of give and take versus okay, are you willing to make renovations and deal with the layout? Are you looking at move in ready home? And it's also it's, it's my job to set the expectation with you. And if yeah. I do that right, I think we're going to be okay because it's going to be a long process. We're going to go through as many homes as it takes. We're going to have five, six, seven offers yeah. decline before one sticks. And that's why I need you to picture yourself in these houses without falling in love with them. 
with that being said, with these averages, there's always exceptions, right? We could stick on the first one, second one. Yeah. There's no way, if, if I could predict the outcome, every single person wins a recipe buy and sell with me, but I can't. It's going to take time. <laughs> yeah, that it does. I think, you know, you kind of underscored, you know, a, re a really big point, which is, and it's easier said than done, right? But acting emotionally in that buying process can be really expensive. I think back to clients that I had last year, you know, when they first came to me, their budget that they absolutely did not want to go above um, was something like $400,000. They mm -hmm. got into a few bidding wars that they lost. And then next thing I know, they're calling me maybe five weeks later saying, hey, there's a house we've fallen in love with. I um, hate when I hear that. Yeah. I, I was I, guilty of it. I hate when yeah. I hear it. Oh. <laughs> um, and they ended up buying it for, for over five. Wow. Um, thankfully, thankfully they had the, the room to be able to qualify for it. It was just, you know, it was their original sticking point of, of, of a number they didn't want to go above. But frequently I tell my clients, look, I'm going to pre-approve you for this amount. Um, but it's always my preference despite, you know, going against my own best interest, I guess, is the best way of saying it. Like, I don't want people to buy at the top end of their pre-approval. Oh, I love that we're going down this. Yeah, oh, this uh, let's let's live there. Uh, let's yeah, let's go there because there's a lot of things that I'm probably not going to tell clients. So one of them, Absolutely. just like one of them, because it's on the screen. Like, I'm pretty against going in for now. Say it loud I, for the people in the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going in firm is a huge risk, um, especially if you're somebody that is putting down less than 20% on a property. Um, now, do I understand the incentive or do I understand why? I'm not saying realtors put the, like the, the pressure on, but do I understand why there's the pressure to do it? 100%. Mm -hmm. we, we all know while there are exceptions that in this market with record low levels of inventory that it's the highest generally speaking and best offer that wins and typically it's the highest firm offer but you risk you risk a lot of things if you can't close i mean you risk not only your deposit you could get sued um and so one of the things i like to prepare my clients for is are you prepared, you know, are you prepared if you can't close with like an A lender, which for those that are, are gonna tune into this or will hear this later, an A lender is like your big six banks, some monoline lenders. Um, they're the ones that have the really great low rates that everybody talks about and wants. Uh, quick aside, there's a lot more to mortgages than just rates, but <laughs> we'll save that for another stream. Um, but it's like, are you prepared to go into the B space? Are you prepared to go private? Um, are you just ultimately the question I ask, not to go on too long of a tangent? I'll do it. I love it. Are you comfortable with the risk of going in firm? And if you're not, don't go in firm, right? Like, in saying that, to be completely open and honest and transparent, um, the last three properties that I've bought or that my wife and I have bought, um, whether they be rentals or whether they be our, our primary residence, like I've bought firm, mm -hmm. but I've also been comfortable with the risk that if we couldn't get a financing that we would go B and pay a higher rate or heaven forbid, we would go private until we could refi conventionally. And there's um, different circumstances that allows these people to buy from some people buy in cash. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. different circumstances for it. And I love that you went down this tangent. I actually want to touch on one of the first things you said, if I'm not Let's go. there. The top of your budget thing in my previous banking life, I preached it to every person that came through my door asking about budgeting. And even now as a realtor is just because it's the top end of your budget doesn't mean you can afford it. 100%. It's this is this is you strap. This is you not living the lifestyle you want. Your income dictates and please correct me if I'm wrong. Your, your income dictates this is what you can afford up to this. 
based on, and every lender's a little bit different only on what they're comfortable of giving out, obviously, sure, but sure. it's just because you can spend up to this much doesn't mean you should. If you spend yeah. down here, you're protecting yourself for rising interest rates, emergencies, or you have to make a big payment. Your, your monthly budget, that's the highest end of your monthly budget. If you want to make it like, I don't know, I just, I'd preach not to go at your highest budget if it's possible. Now, a lot of times it's not always the case, but yeah. I love the fact that you touched on that. Yeah, so I'm going to quickly, very quickly go back down that rabbit hole briefly and then we'll jump into... <laughs> well, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, then we'll, then we'll jump in. So the thing is this, look, yes, your income drives what you're going to be pre-approved for, but let's talk about what's not factored in that pre-approval. Let's do it. Right? So, which is, I don't know, income taxes? Like, that's a pretty big <laughs> thing, right? And so when you're spending 40 percent of your income let's say per mm -hmm. like the bank's calculation or per your lender's calculation and it doesn't include in like income tax like you know that you're going to have to pay income tax it doesn't include utilities it does, there's a lot of things that are not included that are part you of your everyday guy, life. right that's you gotta pay for your phone your cable your ac if you, in your you AC got place. kids you've got child care <laughs> oh, right and so this goes on and on you sign it, the it contract, is a very six long months go by and you lose your job. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so it's a long list. It's important to know the difference between affordability and what you're right. pre-approved right. for. Um, Absolutely. Huge, huge difference. We won't, we won't, don't need to go. I'm glad know, we any... touched on it because it is important to know, but for the yeah. sake of not going too far down that, because I know we could talk yeah. about that for hours. Yeah. Let's, let's move forward here. <laughs> 100%. So you've written, let's say, six offers with Mike. Mm -hmm. You haven't found, you've been patient. You know, you're, you're going through, you're, you're doing everything that he's preaching and that I'm preaching. But then some, your luck changes. You found the right property, whether it's because of buyer fatigue or you just, you know, you, you waited. And we've gotten to the next slide where it's time to pop some bottles because your <laughs> offer's been your offer's been accepted, right? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, then we move into an interesting stage that really nobody talks about, which is preparing to close, right? So there's a real estate side and there's a mortgage side. So kind of like you go through, you know, whether it's been a conditional offer or not what goes on in that preparing to close stage from, from a real estate or from a realtor standpoint? Well, obviously, since you have it right on the screen there, we went in with at least the inspection contingency or condition. So we're going to be bringing an inspector through and our job recommend at least three people. That way you don't feel like we are being biased to one. We recommend a few, unless you already know someone you know that's licensed and you know, like, and trust and be happy to bring them in. Uh, we got a little ahead of ourselves there. I actually got to submit the deposit as soon as possible. Uh, whatever that deposit is that we used on the offer, we get that inspection, boom, done. We're going to sign off on it. We're going to send it over to the seller's side. And then all that's left on here, we have our walkthroughs and our lawyers. Now, I work with a few of them. You may know someone in your family or you've bought real estate before and love the closing lawyer that you use for real estate. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. There's a reason no one talks about this because – as everyone can kind of see that whether you're watching live now or later catching up on this is there's so much high level conversation that happens in step a step b step c that it's not almost not even worth it's worth in our initial conversation letting you know what your closing cost estimates are going to be but it's such an in-depth conversation based on the contingencies that you have or how the deal closes that we almost leave some of this I don't want to say to the end, but we kind of talk about throughout the process. And yeah, the first thing you do is you get your deposit in. That that makes the deal firm um, outside of the conditions, at least. So that shows that you're committed to this contract. You're upholding your side of the contract because we send over the offer you are stating you're going to be getting X amount for your deposit. So I send that to the broker as soon as possible. We do our inspection. We get our walkthroughs. And in the meantime, we're sending a lot, whatever information we need over to the lawyer for them to kind of make sure and give you advice that yes, this contract looks okay. Um, there's so many, like if you buy a condo, they're gonna review the status certificate for you, mm -hmm. make sure the condo is in good health. There's a lot of things that people don't know that a real estate Definitely. lawyer does behind the scenes because it's just not ready to talk about. Yeah. Right? It's not yeah. picturing, it's not, not picturing the pictures on the wall, the TV on the wall, your dog and the like. 
it's not pretty to talk about what the lawyer does, but they're actually a very vital part because they're going to give you a legal recommendation on yeah. what they think of this transaction. 100%. Yeah. Well, and some of the stuff that's not even pictured on there happens behind, behind the scenes. And, and, you know, Mike as your realtor can go through that or whoever the realtor is. Absolutely. So on the mortgage side, so once you have the accepted offer, that offer gets sent into a, the lender that we've, we've kind of talked about or the best lender for your situation. And the goal is that you get an approval back. Now, what trips up a lot of people, including some realtors, is that this approval is conditional. And basically what it means is that the lender is going to give you the money as long as you fulfill mm -hmm. the conditions that are laid out. And so a lot of these conditions are things around like your income is what it's what you like what the application said it was that your debts are paid out that you have the right amount of um you know down payment your debts don't always have to be paid out it depends on how your mortgage application is structured but that is the reason why a good mortgage professional when they're going through the pre-approval process i know it sounds really annoying to pull all those things together but the reason they do it is so that way when you go and you're you know you get a house you're not going to get kind of not to put this indelicately you're not going to get screwed over by your mortgage professional because <laughs> they should have all this stuff within reason that your lender is going to ask for one of the things that is really common in our market especially with some really insane over asking stats is that a lot of lenders are asking for appraisals, whether it's on a purchase or whether it's on a refinance. And so an appraisal will be ordered. Um, sometimes this does, you know, I've seen this cost people as a, as a strike against a walkthrough. Um, so I always recommend, you know, trying to get at least an extra walkthrough or talking to your realtor about that because mm -hmm. uh, they are the experts in those spaces. Um, any question for you on appraisals. Let's go. You can ask a question that I find not a lot of people realize is a true possibility. What happens when you overbid on a home and your appraisal doesn't meet the price? Yeah. So <laughs> it's you won't spot this time. Yeah. No, it, it happens. It happens. No one talks and about it. And it's happening it. a lot more. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens is let's say, let's say you bought a, you're, you're the house was listed for 800,000. You fell in love with it. You put an offer in, it gets accepted at a million dollars, right? So let's say an appraisal comes up and it's 950, just to pick a number. Easy number. Well, now in addition to your down payment, and let's say it's a firm offer, just to play worst case yeah, scenario. Yeah, let's do it. So, in addition to the down payment on your on your mortgage, you also need to put up the difference in cash. So in this case, you're putting 50 grand down plus whatever your down payment was. So, and your new mortgage is only based on 950 times, mm -hmm. let's say it's an 80% loan to value, right? So you're basically putting the difference up in cash. If you have a condition of finance, as somebody that has sold a property and had an appraisal come in light, um, if the condition of finance is in, then you can, there may be an opportunity to negotiate the price. Um, but we are seeing appraisals come in. On the mortgage side, if an appraisal comes in light and it's been sent to a lender, you generally have two options. You can either accept it and pay that difference in cash you can sometimes order a second appraisal depending on the lender they will either take an average of the two or they'll they may depending on the lender's policy mm -hmm. they may have a different treatment and so depending on your timeline as to when you're purchasing or whether you're refinancing it can make sense to get a second appraisal especially in a hot market i recently had a client who um you know, they thought their house was worth 875. Um, we had a really light appraisal come in um, at 787, um, which it, this was a refinance. They, so they didn't need necessarily all the money. They just meant that they couldn't pull out as much. Right. This does still happen on purchases. We ended up waiting two weeks before we submitted it to the lender. 
There was another property that came up that was an even better comparable that had sold for a really stupid amount. So yes, we had to pay for a second appraisal, but when the second appraisal report came in, the value that it came back in, it was at 850. So, I mean, it was an extra 75 grand. The client actually only needed an appraisal of 812. So it allowed them to accomplish all their goals. Awesome. But yeah, that's ultimately that's what happens when you have an appraisal come in light on a purchase, you have to make up the difference in cash. Mm -hmm. Um, in awesome. addition to your down payment. I'm glad, I'm glad so. you touched on it because I know a lot, of, a lot of people, there's so much to think about in this transaction. That's one that get, definitely gets missed a lot, but that is a possibility, especially with how hot we are in Southern Ontario here. That can happen. Yeah. It, it can for sure. It can for sure. And there's, there's a lot of considerations to go through and in, in so putting nice. through an offer, but <laughs> we, we won't get through them all tonight. But sure. uh, so, yeah, then you meet with your lawyer. Yeah, they're doing stuff like, yeah, they're doing your title checks. They're making sure there's no liens against the property. Uh, they're making sure that you understand everything in your contract that you've already signed, whether it's the APS, whether it's your mortgage commitment documents and, and the required disclosures. Um, and then at the end of it, I mean, great. You're getting, you know, fingers crossed, you're getting your keys. Uh, everything's great there. Um, so, I mean, to wrap up that kind of, that is the closing process in, in mm -hmm. a nutshell. Um, is there anything, I mean, so what, what does the Windsor market look like right now? Are we seeing, like, are you guys seeing, is it firm offers only? Are you seeing some with conditions? What is going on within the Windsor it's market? It's a lot right of now? firm offers yeah. and it's unfortunate for buyers, especially first time home buyers, it's so hard to compete right now. And that's why I just keep preaching patience, 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 because there's a lot of firm offers and especially, especially new people. I'm, unless you are 1000% in it and you are capable, I don't even know if I would still recommend not putting conditions in on our offer, which makes it very hard to compete. But my job is to protect you, not to give the seller. Right? Right, my job right. is to protect you and it's, it's competitive as like, as we mentioned earlier and that you said you're kind of familiar with, we have a lot of investors coming in from out of town as well, because we have two yeah. great schools and with great schools come student rentals. With student rentals comes a lot of cash flow for you investors out there as most of them know. Yeah. But with that being said, it's also expanding into areas because winds are so tight knit, it's easy to get from point A to point B that we're competing everywhere with a lot of investors because now our housing market is so short on supply that a lot of people are coming in in giving rentals or short-term rentals in Airbnbs. So we, we're seeing a big influx of a lot of people looking for houses and not a lot of houses out there. And it's not to sound like a broken record for the rest of the province or even the rest of Canada. It's just that is that is what it is. And with how cheap it is, even still with the interest rate slightly going up, how cheap it is to, to borrow money, yeah. it is a recipe for... I don't want to say disaster, but it's a recipe for a lot of difficulties in buying a house if you are yeah. not prepared and that's why you need to talk it's it's a headache and there's a lot of people to talk to but there are conversations you have to help because i'm here to make sure that you get this home you're there to make sure they get the home the lawyer is there to make sure that you're not getting like you said screwed over it's yeah. there's so many moving pieces and parts and there's a lot of competition and it's just it's it's wild out there like the rest of the country i don't want to sound like a broken record so i'm not going to keep saying it but it's yeah. you, you see, everyone sees the headlines everyone a lot of people everyone knows someone that had a bad buying process just because of how long it took now selling yeah. and looking out like a bandit <laughs> yeah yeah you're, selling no, your houses I, or you're doing great but it's the buying is the issue yeah 100 percent there's there's definitely some big risk uh in any areas whether it's you know, everybody it seems to be a common point, like you, like you've underscored there, that supply there's not enough supply to meet the demand with immigration. Um, you know, poised to continue to remain strong. Um, you know, you know this as well as I do. I mean, I think the number is something like 1.3 million immigrants a year for the next three years. Mm -hmm. We know that statistically, 60% of them have landed in southwestern Ontario. Absolutely. And so. With that, I mean, you're going to continue to see strong demand. You can't build houses fast enough. So, you know, there'll, there'll have to be some sort of thing there before we get to a tipping point. Um, so with that, I mean, are there any areas in Windsor 
or in Windsor Essex mm -hmm. that you think are really poised in, in your opinion to, to take off, whether that's because of, you know, some development, uh, what do you see, you know, and I'm not asking you as an investor looking to come down, but like <laughs> you're the expert in the I, area. I love the development that I'm pretty sure it was pitched approved. I want to say it got approved or it's close to approval. I love the Walkerville um, distillery district that they're doing because it's completely revitalizing that area. Right. Like even people from out of town like you that know that's one of the spots to go to for good food is Walkerville. Right. I love it. And it's not too far from the downtown core as well. If you want to grab a bite to eat and it'll get a drink after and just doing that where it's going to liven up that community is absolutely amazing. Another couple of regions that took off though, that is a lot of fun to be around. I spent a lot of time in LaSalle and Amherstburg area as well. Mm. The summer times, those places are a ton of fun. The people are so friendly. You have Micmac and Ojibwe Park in LaSalle, or you have the waterfront in Amherstburg that's just full of beautiful mm. homes. They yeah. closed down during COVID. They actually started closing down their main street downtown because they have a ton of good food in Amherstburg too. I don't know if you've ever been out that way. I know you mentioned Tecumseh in downtown Windsor. Yeah, I've never been in, out to Amherstburg. I've, I've no. heard great things. Go. Uh, next time you are in town, Go. they have a lot of good food down there. They're on mm. the waterfront with a beautiful park and they actually shut down the main street so you can just walk everywhere, grab a bike, go down nice. by the water. It's a beautiful spot too. Those, those three regions have... I'm not going to waste your time because I can. I, I'm obviously biased because I say a lot of good things about all of the okay. communities in Windsor, but those three, they got a lot, a lot of good things going on for them, and it's such fun areas to be around. Okay, so that's just to recap, make sure I understand for anybody that just hears a sound bite at the end, you're basically <laughs> saying Walkerville um, and then Amherstburg with Sal are yeah. kind of, you know, lots of spots. A lot of summer off. festivals too. Tecumseh does as mm. well. Tecumseh has a lot of su summer festivals, the Corn Fest, and They've got one of the best breweries in town too at Frank's. It, it, there's just so much good happening in the counties and in the yeah. different parts of the city. It's just, it's so fun to be around. Not yeah, even just a cliche. It's just a ton of fun. No, it makes yeah, what I do fun because I get to go, I get to go see these places with people and then I get to hang out the water after wherever we go. But 100%. it's, there's a lot of good things and a lot of good growth happening in our city. Yeah. F fair enough, man. I mean, if you, you don't sound like a broken record. I can't ask you the question and then <laughs> complain about the answer. So yeah, I know, uh, I know some investors that have, you know, really honed in kind of on the sandwich area. Um, right near as, the university, as, right? It's student housing. Yeah, they want, they want the cash flow. It's student housing. Uh, yeah. As somebody who invests, I will tell you right now as a quick aside, if you're only somebody that is looking at properties from cash flow, a cash flow standpoint, you'll miss out on some great properties, but Absolutely. that's a, that's a different story and it's a different, different episode. Um, Mike, one of the things looking through, you know, looking into you a little bit. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Mike and I have some, some calm people, you know, it was interesting. I, every time I heard you say no, like in trust, I couldn't help but think about Justin Conoco uh, <laughs> on prime. Um, and so that's, that's originally where I, I kind of came across you, but even looking through a little bit of your IG um, and seeing some of the stuff, it became abundantly clear and it's become a really clear in our conversation tonight. Like you're not only somebody that is a practitioner and really knowledgeable about your, you, you know, the communities you serve, but you're also somebody that's really big in giving back to the communities you serve. <laughs> um, and so if you've got like a, a minute or however, a couple minutes, can you touch on some of the organizations that you've partnered with um, and talk yeah. a little bit about those community initiatives that you've, uh, that you've launched? I, absolutely. Uh, which one do I want to start? I'll start with uh, the Canadian Mental Health Association and yeah, the Windsor Camage. Six Branch. Um, like everyone else, I had my own mental health struggles growing up and because everyone, whether whether it's quote unquote severe or not severe, we all go through it. And it's mm -hmm. a cause that was super important to me. So they are one of the organizations that I partnered up with. And I'll explain what the partnership is in a moment. And then the other one is the Ronald McDonald House Charities that I'm sure you can appreciate because they cover all of South Windsor, Southwestern Ontario, not South Windsor, Southwestern Ontario. So they are located in both Windsor hospitals and our Met Hospital. And I forget which hospital it is in London, if there's one or two. And I know they have a site in St. Mary's, but a lot of people yeah, don't know is Victoria is, Hospital in, in London. Yes. And London. what they do is they um, 
they provide a place for families with very sick children to go. And now my girlfriend who I live with is a pediatric nurse and I love kids myself. And mm -hmm. I know people before I got into real estate that experienced the love and support in the community that Ronald McDonald's house has given to them in London when, when they had issues with their newborn. And right. it was just, I like to help people that are around me. And what I do is with this partnership is anytime that we buy or sell a house and the transaction closes and the commission comes to me, uh, a percentage of that, I actually let you pick if you'd like to go to CMHA or um, the Ronald McDonald house and whichever one means more to you. But I also have a couple more down the pipeline. So it's not just two causes because there's a couple right. more that are important to me. Uh, but those are the main two. Like, it's actually the... I got my license and that is the first thing I did was actually reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm new and I want to partner with you because I want to grow my business on giving back to Windsor Essex on causes that are important to me. And those are the biggest two. So that's kind of the, the spiel with that is, is when you buy and sell with me, we're also going to give back to our community together because there's, whether I'm helping an investor or the family move in, there are things that are bigger than real estate and then you and mm -hmm. I and there are kids and families in need there are people struggling with mental health and I've seen the negative impacts of both of them so I want to try to mm -hmm. help improve those situations as well by giving back every transaction that we do yeah no that that's that's amazing man that's mm -hmm. uh it really is my um my wife is a she's a respiratory therapist at yep. Vic and so she works a lot in the neonative intensive care unit and so mm -hmm. She does do a little bit with with uh, with the PED nurses as well, but yeah, we send uh, we send yeah. a lot to London hospitals from here yeah. for the quality of care. My girlfriend, she she works on PDX. We send a lot to your guys' hospitals, yeah. and that's the one thing I want to preface is when people see Ron McDonald Health Southwestern Ontario, they gave me the percentage, and I forget what it was, but it's an alarmingly high percentage. Is actually from Windsor Essex as well that London mm. Ronald McDonald's is taking care of because we don't have the infrastructure to do it but we are building a new hospital which i'm really excited about so yeah yeah no it's um yeah it, it, the both both causes are are, mm -hmm. are amazing because like you said i mean it is something that is there's a lot it's a lot bigger than the two of us it's a lot bigger than real estate it's you know mm -hmm. the least we can do to you know kind of help out the, the people you know in need and help out our community so with that, I'm going to, you know, basically, I want to, you know, respect your time. I know you have some, some plans coming up. Appreciate um, it. I'm going to fire off three questions, Mike. And uh, with that, then I'll, I'll let you go. That's Thanks, it. just three questions. So first question is this. I mean, I know you haven't been in it a, a ton or an extremely <laughs> long time, but what is something that you've learned in your business or so far in your business? that you wish you knew a lot earlier? Patience. Patience, yeah. Patience. Okay. I'm 26 years old, so I am just crossing that threshold of actually starting to understand what patience is and <laughs> going through the house buying process, moving in with my There's so many different push factors where I thought I had a clue even a couple of years ago. I had no right. idea, and I'm sure I'm going to say the same thing a few years from now, but yeah. be patient with the people around you, be patient in the transaction and just treat everyone with kindness because these transactions are a result of the relationships that you build. If yeah. you're not going to be kind and patient with the people around you, they're not going to work with you. But on top of that, when you feed that energy to them more often than not, I believe people are good and they give you the same patience and kindness back. And that's when relationships will really work well together. hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Um, on, on a personal note, I was moving yeah. outside of business for a sec. I mean, so, what's the favorite, like if you had to pick, you know, in, in a world that is now kind of slowly starting to get back to traveling, what has been the best trip you've ever been on and why? Ooh, the best trip I've ever been on. Yeah. I don't know. I went down to Nashville a couple of years ago and that was a ton of fun. But nice. right before COVID hit, I took my first ever trip outside of North America and I went on a cruise down to the Caribbean with like 30 people of friends and family. And that was, a, that was a ton of fun too. We hit Jamaica, Mexico, and Cayman Islands. So it's a toss up between the two of those for very different reasons. And Nashville, <laughs> we got to experience a lot of true culture in Nashville, which was a lot of fun too. So we took a road trip down there. It's got to be one of those two. Yeah, fair enough. Well, yeah, I, I'm dying to get down to Nashville. I'm a it's huge, fun, man. huge country fan, and, Me and too. I've heard it. Yeah. Uh, Me too. So you're a country fan, you said, right? So I actually went to 
you probably know what the CMA, the Country Music Awards, are, right? I didn't go to the award show, but what they do is they host a concert with the five best songwriters of that year who have five number nice. ones each for other songwriters. Well, it just okay. so happened there was four songwriters that wrote songs for other people, and then the other guy that won the award was Luke Combs, and we sat like third row at a private acoustic concert with four songwriters. Nice. Also, it was it was so much fun. It was a really cool experience to experience that kind of intimate concert in Nashville where that genre just thrives. It was cool. It was a neat experience because yeah. I've been to yeah. a lot of concerts and that was that was one of the top ones for sure. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I'll have to My favorite trip that I've ever been was a family trip to uh family trip when I was at probably summer of grade 10 going into grade 11 would have been uh we went to Italy for cool 23 days. It was the year that Italy had won the World Cup as well. Oh cool. And so we stayed with family. We did a little bit of the touring, but it was just having the time to immerse yourself in the culture there was, uh, yeah. It was just I'm actually, amazing. we're looking at taking a couple pending COVID and the new circumstances going on in Europe. We were planning a trip for late spring, early, or, uh, late spring, early summer to go to Europe, but that's kind of on the back burner now until we see how everything unfolds. But I was really excited to go do that. And I'm hoping we get the chance to do the, travel yeah that would, that would be that would be awesome yeah. um second last question and then i'm gonna let you go yeah, so sure. what is a you know i guess oh, i'll pick book uh are you a big reader mike or no it's okay i became no, once i started getting into this industry i did get into a little bit more reading reading in the last probably two three years now okay so what has been a book that you've read that you would highly recommend whether it's myself read or somebody that's going to tune into this a book that you've read one that, you that changed my degree. life and my mindset was rich dad poor dad actually yeah nice. i love i book. love that book and then there's also the wealthy barber and the wealthy barber returns but that one when i read that i was like holy crap that yeah. just completely and it's not even about real estate it's just more of the mindset of cash flow how money works for you what is truly an asset and what isn't it if you want to start working on your financial literacy or just getting a better understanding on how cash travels that is definitely one that i would recommend yeah yeah it's a it, it's a good book i wealthy barber was a was a really good story remember when i read one. that it was uh it, it was a game changer for myself and now so. i'm working on two i'm working on this guy oh, and then the yeah. other one i'm working it's on, on because yeah. i'm trying to understand stocks a little bit better as well is um what's it called one up on wall street i think it's by peter lynch i'm you know i'm working okay. on that one and then i'm doing the building story brain next this year so yeah no that's uh that makes makes the world of sense mm -hmm. um and then the last question I'll have, just because we're, you know, as we wrap up here, Mike, um, my platform is your platform. <laughs> what, you know, I, I, and I know you recognize podcast. this question. Yeah. Um, my platform is yours. Um, where can people find you? Where can people support any of the initiatives that you've partnered with? You know, what do you kind of want to say at the end before I let you get off to enjoying your, uh, enjoying your weekend? Easiest way, actually. Uh, I'm not... Instagram. I, I respond, as you know, I respond really quickly on there. Instagram's a great place to connect. It goes right to my phone as well, or just search up my phone number and give me a call or text. But if you want to go see what I'm all about, I'm most active on Instagram. It shares everything to Facebook, but I think the quality of what I put out is kind of tailored towards that. So yeah, I'd say just go what is Instagram. your Mike, Mike, Mike Pastorius Real Estate. Perfect. Mike Pastorius yeah. Real Estate. Don't forget the O at the end of my name. You can see it on the screen there. A lot of people forget it, but yeah, Mike Pastorius yeah. Real Estate on Instagram is the easiest way to kind of see what I'm all about and get a hold of me. Beautiful, man. Well, thanks for thanks for spending some time. I appreciate it going it through the process, teaching me and, and anybody else that's going to see this about the Windsor market and kind of some of those great areas, depending on what you're looking for yeah. or where some areas that are really poised to take off. Uh, appreciate it, man. So enjoy your weekend. Yeah, we'll do it again. We'll do it again, again in the future again for sure. Soon. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having Cheers, me. Man. All right. Bye. All right. So that was it, man. I mean, my, Mike, absolute killer. Great source of information. He's done some really great videos as well um, that have highlighted. He did start, as he said, he's got a little bit of a bias for the South Walkerville area, uh, being the area he's been born and raised in. He's got some really cool things. There's a little walk through Austin's Park. I really wanted to connect with Mike because as I alluded to a little bit there, he's given so much back to the community and he's looking at building a business in the right way. You know, some people get into the industry, whether it's mortgages, whether it's realtors, whatever it is, and they're so focused on 
like the commission and the transactions that they don't care enough about the goals of their clients, the goals of, you know, eventually the friends they're, you know, they're trying to build relationships. And that was one of the things in listening to Mike talk a few times and kind of looking through his IG a little bit, it was something that I really connected with. So just thought I would introduce them. Hopefully you got some value out of this and uh, until next time, have a great day guys. Cheers.